Okay, so uh, good morning. Uh, my name is Nathaniel Osgood. I'm going to be your instructor during this boot camp, and uh, it's really a tremendous honor to be with you uh, through the week uh, to lead you in this introduction to agent based modeling. Um, so, uh, within this boot camp, we're going to be exploring uh, a variety of topics related to the principles, practices, and to a certain degree, the processes associated with use of agent-based modeling to deliver insight within the context of health and healthcare. Um, and I wanted to start off um, the event with just a brief introduction, particularly for our local participants, uh, but also the, for those joining us uh, here via Zoom. Um, for those who are local, uh, there's a set of resources up here on the board that I'll be describing, um, but there's also some resources that I'll be alluding to uh, in the slides and that are accessible via URLs um, that have been sent uh, to the participants. Uh, so broadly speaking, the goals of this boot camp uh, are to provide uh, the participants an understanding of the basics of using, consuming, helping to manage, and to a degree build uh, agent-based models in any logic. Um, there's a significant element of the model building we go over, although it's not exhaustive, um, which would be prohibitive in a one week. Uh, it is enough to get uh, people started and situated with all the basics of building models uh, within this platform. Um, but in the process of doing this, um, and more deeply, we're hoping to convey um, to, the, to the participants here um, an understanding of where agent-based modeling fits in and the broader landscape of the tools of the health scientist. In the contemporary toolbox, uh, where traditional tools such as uh, statistical analysis, uh, qualitative uh, data analysis have been supplemented by uh, other computational methods, including um, tools such as machine learning uh, in its various forms with deep learning, large language models um, being amongst those, uh, Bayesian deep learning and others. And we will talk some about the intersection and situate agent-based modeling within that broader context. Um, we're also seeking here to um, make sure that uh, those who work with models, even if they don't build them, are comfortable navigating, understanding what they mean, how to run them, how to modify them, and how to, how to interpret them enough to challenge them, to, um, to provide feedback on them in the broader context of modeling teams. Uh, and uh, I am seeking um, for all the individuals within this to, to make sure that no matter what your particular goals on your journey into modeling, that you're equipped um, to succeed in that process. And that will be different for different parties. Now, reflective of that diversity of participants, um, we uh, are going to see a wide variety of materials and types of uh, activities uh, within the course of the six days. Um, some of it will be conceptual, providing key conceptual underpinnings for uh, understanding what's going on in these models we'll, with which we'll be working. Uh, and understanding the perspective that they take, which is very different perspective than is traditionally taken in many other quantitative tools within the health science sphere. Um, tools such as I've mentioned before that include, for example, statistical models, um, but also tools uh, that are more contemporary, such as machine learning models. The stance taken uh, by agent-based modeling and simulation, and more broadly by dynamic modeling as an enterprise, is quite different from that uh, taken uh, within techniques that are more focusing on eliciting understanding of associations. The two are not solitudes. There is some overlap, 
there are some uses of statistical modeling and machine law modeling that um, that verge on aspects of dynamic modeling. And there are certainly ways they can be used together fruitfully, but they're different. And we're because many people are going to be coming from a background with techniques outside the realm of, of dynamic modeling and simulation, it's important that we convey that difference. And many of your responses in that pre-survey have helped reinforce the importance, the value, and the recognized desire for that on your part. Beyond though that conceptual material, and often interwoven with it, we're going to have a set of hands-on material. This will be ubiquitous, and it will come in two primary forms. Form one, building models within this platform. Form two, opening, interacting with, running alternative scenarios in, and delving into the details of an understanding of pre-existing models. And to that end, I've provided close to 100 example models to you in a resource I'll be, to which I'll be pointing you in just a moment. Now, um, supplementing this conceptual man, um, material on the one hand and the hands-on building, we're also going to have a set of case studies. And for those registered in the, in the incubator and seeking to pursue projects, uh, a set of project work as well that will build your understanding by applying these tools to areas of your interest and focus. Um, grappling with the issue of how we, in concrete terms, apply these to a given area. Uh, and then, and again, informed as is ubiquitous in the schedule by your feedback on those surveys, uh, we're going to be spending a fair bit of time every day, particularly for the start, with reflections on the previous day's material and solicitation of student questions. Where um, I'm seeking and I'm hoping to get in place dialogue uh, regarding uh, some of the material so that we can better can better understand what we've heard and better link it up to your areas of interest. So this, I'm hoping going to be consistently each day, a substantial amount of time for discussion. Invariably, that's going. there's going to be some at the beginning of the day and often at the end as well. Now, while I took most of the weekend to ensure that I could adapt the schedule to your interests uh, as, as participants, as expressed through the responses I got. Um, it's inevitable that this schedule will adapt. Dwight Eisenhower once quipped that planning is everything, but the plan itself at any one time is nothing. Uh, it's ephemeral. But it's the process of creating it, thinking it through, engaging with what the constraints are, what our needs are, that allows it to deliver value, even though at any one time it's inevitably going to be rendered obsolete. And Clauschwitz once commented that no plan survives contact with the enemy. Now, the, the participants here are not the enemy, but uh, we will find that the schedule will, will evolve a lot. And we're going to see how we're going with progress. Most importantly, I'm going to see how uh, participants uh, feel about the material. If there's areas where you're interested in hearing more, if there's particular examples 
that you'd like to see explicated more completely. If there are other spheres of interest that you'd like this in, in which you'd like to see more examples or more textured uh, discussion, please let me know. I'd be glad to think how we could fold it into the schedule. And already I'm I'm considering some tweaks here and there. So please speak with me and I'd be glad to accommodate things. Um, the goal of this event is to empower you and your journeys. Whatever your background, um, whatever your particular interest in modeling, um, I'm, I'm hoping we can help you with that. And a key part of that is bringing, um, uh, bringing your needs to my attention. Okay. Um, so a few more words before we launch into some substantial material. Um, as I noted, the boot camp is too short to allow for truly comprehensive uh, coverage of these materials. I do have a full semester course um, that uh, I taught um, two or so years ago for the Fields Institute that got more, a little bit more comprehensive, but, but at the expense of the central central component for this boot camp of hands-on exercises. We 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 didn't feature them enough. And and I'm going going through the thinking to create a second version of that full semester course, which would include lab components and more uh more, more uh complete uh experience in terms of interaction with modules and projects. And it may be that we have a second add-on course. Um, but this week, it's clear, whatever the evolution of that, this week is too short for thorough um, thorough coverage. My, my colleague and dear friend, Jeff McDonald, who helped um, inspire some of the uh, elements of this material, and the structure behind it, the ones commented to me. Um, when it comes to planning these boot camps, the hardest thing is to figure out the 90% that I don't talk about. <laughs> and that's a bit of an exaggeration, but not by much. Um, really, um, we're, we're dealing with the tip of the iceberg, but hopefully the most important uh, part of that. And again, uh, you know, feedback is needed to ensure that that's meeting your needs. Okay, a little bit more on the nitty gritty side here before we get to conceptual, uh, conceptually substantive uh, material. So one thing is that um, these these talks are recorded. Um, we do have. Um, uh, we do have a uh, recording that attempts to be more or less complete during this boot camp, the exceptions being if there are groups spawned off um, for incubator coverage, we're not recording them. But for lectures, hands-on exercises, reflections at the beginning of the day, discussion, we try to make sure we capture it. And... Uh, as is written on the bit, uh, on the board here and on the screen here, at this tiny URL, you will find uh, videos accreting through the course. Um, that is, uh, every day I try to post the videos of all the, the different lectures separated by lectures. Um, and they're a bit rough and ready. Um, I don't have time to do editing on them to to polish them, but um, they are uh, going to capture much of the material. And they'll be available, as far as I'm concerned, in perpetuity. Um, if, you, if you find that I'm not recording at a certain time, particularly 
for for the remote participants who are invariably coming to us through Zoom, welcome. Uh, please let me know, and and I will uh, seek to ensure that we record as quickly as possible. Okay, now again, important components here. Um, we have a. Can you can you folks uh, online still see the slides? I've just dragged the controls over so they don't block this. Are there are there TAs? Okay, thank you. Wait. Okay, so there's a set of four materials for this course to which we'll be returning time and time again. Uh, at these successive URLs, we will have. Uh, growing collections of materials. Uh, so for the overall collection, you can find it at this ABM Bootcamp 2024. Um, uh, there's a link here to instructor videos, but <laughs> those are um, what they what they have in substance, they lose in quantity. Uh, there's kind of an ocean of them at this point, probably somewhere between 2000 and 3000. Um, the videos from this, I, I mentioned, they're at the videos address. And then we have, for those in the incubator, a course project spreadsheet. This is on Google Sheets. Uh, and if people would like for an incubator, Components. This is this is for in per person folks. Um, so we can pair you up with TAs in the rooms here. If you'd like to go there and add project descriptions, projects that you're planning or projects that you're considering, um, we'll make sure that you're paired up with an appropriate TA team. That I'm aware of it and can advise the TAs that we can get you example models. Um, uh, discuss with you model scope and get going on these projects um, for the incubator. So filling this in uh, is important for the in-person incubator components. Um, these others, the course materials and instructor videos will be um, will be posted as the day goes by. So what's there? Well, there's a bunch of things of which you could do away. First of all, there's the draft schedule itself. And what I, 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 I want to draw a, your attention to a particular form of resource for that schedule. Okay? Specifically, in the schedule, while it lists the broad topics we'll be covering during the day and the rough timing, start 8.30, you know, go to lunch roughly around 1230 and uh, finish up roughly around 430. What's rather more important than the vagaries of that timing or, you know, the titles are a set of descriptions that I've added. And those descriptions are designed to convey, you know, uh, some brief summaries of the points that I'm seeking to communicate within each of those uh, modules. So when you look at the schedule, please, if you can, try to acquaint yourselves with those summaries because um, you'll you'll better better understand a lot of the the key the key notions from a given talk. You'll they'll probably be communicated to you more more completely if you review that material. Um, I've also posted in the Google Drive at the, at the uh, site linked to by this ABM Bootcamp 2024 kind of URL draft lecture slides. Right now, there's just a, a couple, um, but they will be joined by a broad set in, uh, in coming, um, coming hours and days. Now, beyond that, uh, we're going to have, we have a set of example models. Um, they are in the, uh, in the participant resources folder right now. And 
we're going to add to those over time. If, if, if I'm careful, I will seek to take the ones we've discussed in class set and, and copy them and have a separate copy of them. So you can easily refer back to those in class. So you don't have to wade through with no, with no uh, disservice to uh, our TA by that name. You don't have to wade through the, uh, the broad set of materials uh, the broad set of example models um, that um, uh, that that are present because there are, there are many. So there's a set of example models uh, in a sort of a library, and then we'll have a small set, and we'll have a set that we built up live in class that will be curated, and where we'll be posting periodically as we build them up, so you can you can grab them at any time. So I, I want to highlight this. This is an important one. So as you're building up models interactively, if you find yourself placing over, if you find yourself confused and stuck, please, first of all, raise your hand and TAs will help. And by hand, I mean both physical hand and online hand. And Wade has his hand up. Um, so sorry to interrupt. Yeah. The student online says when you move away from the laptop, the music. Okay, thank you. I um I I really appreciate understanding this. This is the first time we're using this particular microphone, and I will seek to tweak from the settings of this um in the in the next day and figure out how to make it less directionally sensitive. I, Probably what I could do is do something like this. Um, so um, uh, if uh, I really appreciate that feedback for the online participant, if you could let me know, can you hear me now at the cost of spreading a meme? Um, can you hear me now? Uh, yes. Yes? Okay. Okay. Uh, thank, thank you again. That's important. And I welcome those those additions to the course there. Uh, we have um, some example code that's uh, provided in a set of background um, sort of guides for those seeking to, to get started with any logic. There's a hands-on reference and sort of a, a crypt sheet for doing common tasks. Um, and there's some background materials, including pointers to papers of, of, and books of elephants, et cetera. Um, and, uh, and yeah, some, some reference steps. Okay. So in the set of resources provided, those should be there already, but in coming days, we'll be uh, providing more specific to this bootcamp. Okay. So the roles of teaching assistants here are many. So, um, I, I want to communicate this particularly for those who are here in person uh, because they'll encounter the the uh, TAs here uh, wearing many hats, okay? Uh, in fact, Jen is wearing one right now. Um, so um, firstly, they will be um, helping in class for problems that you've encountered. And for online participants, again, I want to emphasize, please raise your hand. The TAs will come and, uh, and interact with you online via the Zoom chat. Um, if you require more assistance, we have breakout rooms set up where you can hive off with the TA, share your screen, engage in voice interactions, and hopefully quickly resolve your issue, okay? So one foremost role the TAs play is to help in troubleshooting, okay? Um, but that's just one of many roles. Um, and uh, they're going to be presenting some case studies. Um, uh, so folks like Jenna, We'll be hearing from today and, and Wade here and Eric uh, uh, will be, we'll be presenting during the week. 
Uh, they can also help you by explicating some of the models that I that we either build together or or that you find in the library or models to which I refer you because of your interests. Uh, often in a given area, there may be a set uh, to which I refer you and they can help you sort of make sense of those, um, how they work, um, uh, interpret some of the outputs, some of the scenarios, et cetera. And uh, if you're interested in getting guidance consultations on applying agent-based modeling and hybrid modeling to your areas, I can't think of a better resource um, than the collective set of TAs uh, who are serving this bootcamp. So um, please, please reach out to them in that capacity. Um, right, okay, I have a set of requests that I ask of participants. Um, so if possible, when we're gonna start a lecture, Try to scan the summary beforehand, even if it's just to skim it. Um, if you don't have a chance to do that, maybe do so after um, the lecture. It'll help you absorb the material better. I've noted the importance of signaling online or, or in person um, that you need help. We're going to be using this platform any logic to build up these models. And there will be times uh, where using, typing things by hand will be error prone and will be time consuming. And there's a feature in the software that will be demonstrated. And uh, to which I commend you, which is to use autocomplete uh, for the software. It will, out um, long names that otherwise you might miss time. I'll be coming back to this point again and again, but please keep it in mind. Autocomplete is your friend and uh, it will often spare you a great deal of time and a great deal of trouble in many cases. Uh, so please ask questions. Um, I would suggest that, you know, this, um, this is for in-person participants. Um, don't be shy. Please be encouraged to be in the front row uh, if that will help help you read these screens better. Uh, and let me know if the font size is too small. Sometimes when I'm showing you know, some details of the computational mechanisms and I can make it larger, okay? Um, uh, there are models posted that I'm going to be posting periodically during the exercises. Often in a given exercise where we're building it up, I might post six steps along the way. That takes a bit of time. I'll ask for your patience. But I would suggest, if again, if you're getting confused or you've forgotten something and you're not sure what, you can load one of those in and keep on going with it and just elaborate on that. Um, for Wednesday or Thursday, um, you're gonna, it's handy if you have a mouse. Um, uh, and even better if you have, which I don't know would agree, a rat. Um, no, <laughs> it's joking. If you have a, if you have a mouse, if you could bring one, it'll, it'll help you navigate within, within the software awfully well. Um, and uh, finally, help your neighbor um, if, if, if they're getting stuck, um, uh, maybe you could, uh, could reach out or, or help bring a TA there. Okay, a few other things. So all these machines are uh, installed with any luck. They should all be booted every day, the machines in this room, to window. When we came in this morning, we had a surprise. Um, they were instead booted to Linux. Um, and so before you arrived, the TAs went through systematically and rebooted all these machines. Um, and I appreciate that enormously for the TAs. Um, uh, but they're designed to allow you to log in 
uh, via uh, special credentials. Uh, and importantly, any materials that you create, like example models, things you download, et cetera, will be associated with your account. And that account will follow you between machines. What that means is, is if you sit on one machine today and you move to another tomorrow, there's no problem, okay? Um, except if you put it in temporary places uh, on the machine, which which would take you know some some uh, mal support on it. Um, so uh, you know you'll use that same login, and it will give access to those those uh, things you built up uh, the previous day. Wireless networks are available. Those um, who are not U of S based um, as, as participants will be using a shared credential. What that means is you'll have a common, common amongst you, username, this ABM Bootcamp 2024, and a password. And what's really important and brought out here on the on the um, uh, whiteboard is that things that are normally O's in how you write these words, boots on the ground, are actually zeros. Okay, so you're going to want to uh, keep that into account. And this too is a zero. Um, in the in the uh, in the year. Okay, so that's just something for um for those in the room. If you haven't had a chance to do it I, prior to the boot camp for participants, I sent out a request to download any logic. If you haven't had a chance, you can do so at uh, uh, at this uh, link. Um, okay. Uh, something about the physical surrounds. We are in this room shown in red here, and let me see if I can get this. Camera to pan a little bit more. Um, we're in this room in the red. Um, I am approximately here right now. Um, that's my instructor station. That's the back door. Um, on that side, that side. Um, we have a set of breakout rooms reserved for this event. This room is not our only resource, physical resource. We have a set of four breakout rooms located yonder, uh, 341, 342, 371, 372, that are, with the exception of 341, equipped with projectors or screen screens to allow you to, to show your work. Those will be of use in the incubator portion of the event, uh, and your Encouraged to hive off. If, if you're following an incubator project, you can take a T at your TAs at any point and head off to those rooms and play hooky from this event. You'll be learning. I mean, you'll play hooky from the from the lectures, but you'll be quite possibly learning more by doing in those boot camp um, in those uh, breakout rooms uh, with your projects. So feel free to do that. Um, your learning is foremost, and one of the best ways to learn uh, is through the uh, particulars of the projects in adapting the material to your area. So that's part of the bargain here. You can grab your TAs and run, okay? Okay, so those are some things about sort of administrivia. Um, I'm going to do something that I'm I'm, uh, neglectful to not have done yet. Um, I'm going to be monitoring the chat here and I'll try to keep it up. I apologize that I wasn't keeping track of it, but it looks like um, it's under control. So apologies for that. I will try to keep that. And as always, better late than never. And as I say, better Nate than lever. Okay, it's not everyone got that, but... Um, Humor will be an important part of this boot camp. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, okay. So, um, any questions about boot camp organization, administration, um, resources, 
anything you've heard or anything you haven't heard that's on your mind? Anything that we can address from online participants or those who are local? Questions? Day two, but they... Oh, day two. Great, great. Uh, so, uh, Jun Chao, yes, um, uh, day question, day two questions. Um, if you'd like to speak up or if you'd like to type in the chat for remote participants, either is good. Can you hear me, Professor? Uh, I can hear you. It's a bit faint. Um, let's use this opportunity to boost the uh the speaker a little bit and let's see if we can make the audio work because it will be a an asset okay if you could say something more yes professor uh you are you come through loud and clear jun chow yes so please thank you thank you um on the agendas in day two the case study at the end of the day says participatory agent-based modeling uh i just want to understand whether that's the, the participatory part whether that's uh, from the academic sense of like um, people participate in the conceptualization, development, and implementation of the model. Is that what you mean by participatory here? Yeah, thank, thank you for bringing this uh, question to the attention, um, uh, to my attention. So um, uh, within, so when I received uh, feedback um, on participant backgrounds and interests, as submitted by that pre-survey. Um, I thought to go through there and, and abstract out some of the major areas of interest. And one, one of the areas that I heard quite frequently in participant, as part of participant interests was um, community-based and participatory modeling. Um, the process of informing a model with the insights um, and sometimes lived experience of people outside the modeling team. Um, those affected by the model, stakeholders and the systems that are being modeled, community members, or people with lived experiences with the sort of conditions um, that are being reflected in the model health conditions, and that you're seeking to, to improve, whose health conditions you're seeking to improve. And um, so I, I purposefully chose in the, in the uh, schedule to feature a few case studies that, that discuss this, and to put it on the docket as a potential topic for broader discussion and um, and for uh, for coverage at a more systematic level. Um, so your question is a really good one. You know, um, when we talk about participatory agent-based modeling, um, what's the form that that takes? At what stage of the modeling process? Is it in early stage of model conceptualization, model scoping? Um, uh, you know, the, the sort of planning the, the extent of the model and, and often group model building is a key component of that. Um, that's a very powerful thing to do that will inform um, a choice of model scope that often is impactful and, and recognizes the um, the reality of the situation on the ground and, and, and people's lived experience or system stakeholder understanding. Um, Jenna will be speaking some about this later today, um, that earlier stage of participatory modeling for model conceptualization. But the truth is, participatory processes, just like patient-oriented processes or um, community engagement, that can be undertaken at many stages of a modeling process, at the point of model formulation at the point of model calibration and and early model results at the stage of discussion of sort of model scenario trade-offs um 
model testing earlier on as well. All of these are areas where participant or engagement can actually be really valuable for different reasons often. Um, for example, early on, um, often it's shaping our understanding, a broad understanding of big drivers in place or barriers that, that play an important role in governing the system that we're seeking to model. A lot of fancy terms, but basically we're, we're shaping our mental model of the situation in more foundational ways. Often later in the modeling process, we are seeking to get feedback from people that leverages the dynamic nature of the model and specifically model output um, that relates to um, behavior of the model that may or may not comport with, may or may not jive with, may or may not be consistent with the lived experience of particular stakeholders or, or people with that condition. They may, they may challenge that, and that's the success of modeling. Some of you will soon hear from this podium, um, me comment on the view of modeling as learning. Um, modeling models represent learning processes uh, that help us learn more quickly, more deeply, more reliably. And it's not that they represent the truth, but they help speed us towards the truth. They help us more quickly identify cherished beliefs on our part that just don't don't add up. And one of the main ways we can do that is, is by models, simulation models, quantitative models, help us put together, capture in the model sort of a theory of our understanding that captures our understanding as best we know it and as best related evidence suggests. And then we can run, simulate it over time and see results that may or may not separately be consistent with what we see in the world or with the lived experience of people or, or system stakeholders. And this is really important because we may look, we may ask those system stakeholders to help us inform our choices of, 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 of what's in the model scope or a bit later in the process, help us formulate um, uh, some judgments about how we describe the situation in the world and the model, what's called formulation stage, how we represent stages of, of a condition or what have you. But those are cases where what's in front of them is what they critique directly. Um, it's really at this later stage where we have model output, things that aren't put directly into the model, but rather we don't tell the model that the model produces that at that later stage, this model output. And often it's counterintuitive. Often it's not something we can anticipate. Often it's not something we we know ahead of time what it's going to do. And sometimes it comports with our experience. Sometimes it is consistent with our um our experience or those of the system stakeholders or people with the condition. And sometimes it's not. And Often getting their feedback there helps us refine the model further. It helps us challenge it. It helps us critique it. And that's not a failure of the model. It's the success of the modeling that we bring out that hidden knowledge from people. Knowledge that is often tacit. They wouldn't think to mention it, except that they see the model output and they say, oh, yeah, I used to see things like that, but I don't now. Or, oh, that's similar to what we see in this area of the system. Um, or during these periods of time, but not all the time. And, and it's by engaging the model with stakeholders often that we, we elicit that tacit knowledge on their part it's by exposing them to model output. So we're talking here, when we talk about participatory modeling, we're speaking to Miguel about that engagement of people outside the modeling team with the model at all stages of the modeling process. Is, is that helpful? Yes. Okay. Yeah, and in this session, uh, we're going to discuss how this engage this stakeholder engagement happened, or we're actually going to 
to uh, uh, explore this process ourselves? Uh, yeah, the, great question. Um, so we're going to be in a set of case studies, uh, Jenna's um, uh, for today, uh, Wade's uh, with um, uh, participatory modeling in a First Nation community around water. We're going to be um, looking at, at uh, examples of how it's been applied. Um, uh, as uh, my TAs, if, if you're interested in the nitty gritties of applying it, like in practice and seeing it done, um, we uh, our group certainly um, undertakes uh, such tasks, and uh, you could speak with either of the presenters about that. We have had past boot camps where we've had a participatory session where we elicit in a sort of group model building process, the understanding of people across the participants. And um, it is something which in principle could be done um, in a couple hours of time. Um, uh, so, you know, if there's a really strong interest of that, um, I could think if there's some way we could get a live experience in it, of it. But if not, certainly the TAs can can talk with you, and uh, potentially there's ways outside the boot camp we could give you some glimpse of that by involving you in some participatory process or what have you. Hopefully that's helpful. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah, great question. Any other questions here? Okay. So uh, if there's none, I'm going to stop my screen sharing and uh we will stop the recording i see 